uh, good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Patrick Chu, and uh, I come from the Supermicro as a storage product management. And uh, appreciate the opportunity today. We can introduce the next generation EDSF or flash array to everyone. And also, we are discuss the CXL system level management challenge. Uh, here is the today's agenda. We are talk about the EDSF storage uh, evolutions. And uh, we are talk about the uh, next generation EDSF platform innovation. And uh, we are touch the EDSF 2T CXL device management challenge and then the call out. Uh, first, uh, uh, let's take a look at the EDSF SSD benefit. Uh, as many of you know, traditional UDAR2 has been on the market for many years. The UDAR2 is designed for the SAS SATA SSD or even, the, even earlier is the Spindle uh, hard drive. But right now we are entering the PCIe Gen 5 era, so the traditional form factor cannot continue to support the latest technologies, no matter from the thermal uh, power or the uh, signal integrity. So the community invented the latest generations uh, EDSF form factors and uh, has been supported by the OCP communities. And uh, right now it's uh, introduced to the other uh, data center and the enterprise customer. The main advantage has uh, several. The first one is the capacity scaling. The EDSF, you can see they have the different PCB size, so you can hold a different size of the NAND. The second one is the performance. EDSF have the multiple uh, link widths. They can support it by four, by eight, by 16, right? And uh, you can provide the different performance. And uh, the third one is the thermal efficiency. The EDSF connector is much smaller than the traditional UDA2 connectors. And also you can see the E1S or the E1, uh, E1 long, they have the heat sink on the side to improve the thermal efficiency and help the system level have a better thermal control. The third one is the so-called future proof. Uh, we do know that right now that it's, uh, all the computer has uh, moved to the PCIe Gen 5. The PCIe Gen 5, the signal integrity is the most uh, challenging. And uh, we do know uh, the, for the traditional UDA2, uh, we encounter lots of the challenging on the SI, the signal integrity side. But with this uh, new EDSF form factors, uh, we have a confidence and uh, we also work with the other SSD vendors, uh, figure out this could be continued support the PCIe Gen 5, Gen 6, and uh, even the future Gen 7. The solution range, EDSF is not only for the SSD, but also for the many other application because uh, it can support from 20 watt all the way to the 70 watt. For example, we have the CXL, we have the OCP 3.0 NIC, all leverage these uh, new form factors. So we have a confidence this will be a new industry standards. Here is the EDSF form factor comparisons uh, for you to reference. Uh, the blue one is the EDSF and um, uh, on the right hand side, we can see this is the E3, which is our focus and also uh, main focus on the enterprise uh, use case. Uh, we have the E3S and the, and the 1T and the 2T. S uh, represent the uh, short and the E3 long is uh, longer than the e, uh, E3 short. You can see from the uh, slide. And we have a 1T and the 2T. 1T is the 7.5 millimeters. 2T is 16.8 uh, millimeters. Compared with the UDA2, they are very similar, but just slightly longer. And we also have the E1S and uh, can compare with the traditional UDA2, uh, M.2, sorry, and uh, then also the E1 that long uh, form factors. Uh, Supermicro is the pioneer uh, vendor to support the EDSF form factors. From the 2018 to 2019, Supermicro is the first vendor launched the uh, the E1 that long and the E1 that short, and also the Samsung NF1 form factors. This is the PCIe Gen 3, and uh, we support the Cascade Lake, the CPU architectures. Uh, we support uh, up to the 60, 165 watt, 24 dims, and the two PCIe slot. And the, eight, the 19, we support the E1 short and the NF1. But uh, in the last year and this year, Supermicro is continue to support these uh, EDSF form factors. Uh, this is uh, PCIe Gen 5 versions. Last year, we launched the uh, Intel Sapphire Rapid Dual Socket E1S uh, form factors, and we can support uh, up to 32 uh, PCIe uh, the, uh, DDR5 and up to the 624 E1S uh, SSD. And this year, 
we are partner with the Samsung. Uh, so this morning, you, you heard uh, the keynote talk about the PBSSD. We are working with the Samsung to launch this uh, new PCIe Gen 5 E3 phone factors. We support uh, two kind of architectures. One is the Intel Sapphire Rapid Dual Socket. Uh, the other is the AMD Single Socket uh, uh, Genoa. We can support uh, up to the 32 DIMM in the Intel base and the 24 DIMM in the uh, AMD base and we can support much more PCIe LAN compared with the previous generation, and also higher uh, CPU TDP. So let's take a look at the uh, EDSF storage adoptions. Uh, in the early, in the 2019, uh, the ecosystem is not as rich as right now. Only a certain hyperscaler is uh, using this uh, uh, EDSF, or we call the Intel ruler from the hyperscaler. For example, the E1 Dalong or E1, uh, E1 short. It's not that popular. Only p Samsung and the Intel support these form factors. But in the DC years, uh, you can see all the major SSD vendors uh, uh, start to uh, support these form factors. No matter from Samsung, Kyosha, uh, Solid, and Intel, and the Micron, we all have uh, these uh, new form factors. Uh, support so it boosts up lots of the confidence to the end user. This is the phone factor will be continued instead of the single vendor lock in. Uh, the other is the hardware readiness. Um, right now we are entering the PCIe Gen 5 era. The PCIe Gen 5 processor support the more PCIe LAN and the higher core count. We do know the in the NVMe all flash array, uh, NVMe rely on lots of the core count. Uh, in the earlier, we have a less core count to drive for all the NVNE. And then right now, we have the Intel Sapphire uh, Rapid. You can have the 80 PCIe LAN and the 60, up to 64 core. And for the AMD Genoa, a single socket can support uh, up to 128 PCIe LAN and uh, support up to 128 core. This is uh, helping the uh, system uh, designer, including uh, like Supermicro, easily to design the system. We don't need to leverage the PCIe switch. And also for end user, you will have a more uh, CPU core count to drive all the um, NVMe and the boost up all the performance. The other, based on our couple years observation, is uh, the major uh, uh, challenging for the adoption is the networking. In the 2019, 2018, the popular networking maybe is the 50 gigabits networking or some of the data centers still use a 25G. If you have a high performance uh, uh, all flash array, but uh, your networking is not ready, all the bandwidth is still being limited inside the system, you cannot be shared with the other servers uh, in the data centers. But right now, 100 gigabits uh, networking is very popular, and the 200 gig and the 400 gig has been using in the high performance computing, including the AI or those uh, mission critical workload. So with this high performance networking environment infrastructures, it will help us, uh, the end user, to adopt uh, these all flash arrays. Next, uh, let's, case, uh, let's take a look at the, our PCIe Gen 5, the new petascale uh, innovations. Uh, we have a couple innovations I want to share with everyone. The first uh, is the unified chassis. In the earlier, uh, we, can, we talk about the E1 long, E1 short, NF1. We have a multiple chassis multiple layout design, but this time uh, Supermicro decided to redesign the, the unified chassis. We have uh, one designed chassis, we can support uh, both AMD and the Intel, and uh, leverage the single motherboard, the Supermicro's uh, building block technologies, and um, uh, we can support the 1U up to 16 E3 SSD, or the 2U support up to the 32 E3 SSD, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, we don't need to use the PCI switch due to the PCI Gen 5 uh, CPU architectures, and the, the chassis is less than the 32 inch depths. Uh, it's uh, easy to fit in the older modern data centers. And uh, in the um, 1U16 uh, uh, SSD uh, design, we can also change the four uh, the SSD from the e E3S1T to the E3S2T uh, for the CXL support. Uh, the Supermicro is the first defender to support the E3 uh, S2T CXL on the market. The other important factor is the balanced architectures. This is the uh, all flash storage and the design for the data center or the software defined vendors. The software defined vendor, the biggest challenge is the new map balance. So when we uh, redesign this uh, next generation EDSF, we keep this uh, new map balance in mind. 
in the AMD single processor environment, you can see we reserve the 64 PCIe LAN to the SSD, and then we also reserve the 64 PCIe LAN to the real-side networking. We want to make sure the front and the back, the performance is identical, and uh, you can share all the SSD bandwidth to your network to the, uh, the rack or data centers, other uh, compute or GPU system. Similar concept also apply to the Intel dual socket. Instead of the front and the back balance, uh, per socket you will have a 32 uh, PCIe LAN to the, uh, to the front and uh, a 32 the, the real side. And uh, we also make sure the dual socket is a perfect balance. So uh, we try to eliminate the new math challenge and uh, helping the software define to get uh, the best performance and uh, reduce all the uh, uh, new math uh, complex. The next one is uh, another major uh, innovation is from the signal integrity and the airflow. You can see with the EDSF, those uh, 1C connectors, uh, Supermicro redesigned this back plan. Doesn't, look, doesn't like the traditional UDA2 SSD back plan. We only need these uh, 1C orthogonal connectors. So the, from the motherboard, we can have uh, the MCIO cable connect to the 1C connector directly, reduce the SSD backplane routing uh, and the signal loss. This can help us reduce the almost 40% of the signal loss compared with the UDA2 uh, backplane. The other is um, airflow. You can see due to this orthogonal backplane on the, e, on the E3 SSD and the backplane, basically you cannot see the backplane here. So we ensure that they have enough the gap between the SSD, uh, allow the uh, cool air to cool down the SSD. On the button is the traditional UDA2 uh, backplane. Everything has been blocking by the, the backplane. So with this uh, new technology, new design, there's no vertical backplane blocking the airflow. So for the uh, front opening, we can see the more than 75% increase and also for the system level, we kind of improve the 20% of the system level CFM. These uh, couple uh, important uh, uh, innovations uh, that are helping us uh, to design the next generation uh, all flash array and the leverage the, all the benefit from the EDSF phone vectors. Okay, let's take a look at the Supermicro's uh, next generation, the Intel-based X13 uh, topologies. As I mentioned, we have the unified architectures. On the left hand, left hand side, the two design uh, topology is for 1U. We can support the 1U16 E3 SSD, and then we have the two OCP 3.0 NIC, plus the uh, two PCIe Gen 5 by 16 slot in the real side for any networking or, exten uh, or other extensions. Uh, in the second one, uh, the orange, uh, those icon is represent the CXL, so we, Leverage the same architectures, but we change the back plan. So this system, we are able to support the full CXL plus the AE3 SSD. And uh, in the real side, we still have the same uh, network extensions. On the right hand side, you can see we have the two, uh, two U architectures. We leverage the same motherboards. And uh, uh, first, we can support up to the 32 E3 SSD, and uh, each SSD is by four. So uh, but we need to redirect the real side PCIe Gen Z uh, signal to the front. So you will have the 128 PCIe then to the front, and you still have the two OCP 3.0 NIC for your networking. On the right hand side, if a customer you prefer the more balanced systems, you have a 24 SSD by four, but you have the four NVMe, uh, sorry, the PCIe slot for, for any extensions. So with these uh, unified architectures, and uh, we can be very flexible and uh, to meet uh, all kinds of workloads. With uh, these um, um, similar architectures, this is the AMD base. AMD, we leverage the single socket. Uh, Genoa is 128 PCIe lens, and uh, we still have the same architecture for our 1U system. We can support uh, up to the 16 E3 SSD, or we can support the 4 CXL plus the 8 E3 SSD. Uh, but in the 2U side, it's a slightly different. We can support the 2U 24 SSD by 4, and uh, we need to uh, leverage the real-side Gen Z signal to the front. 
or this is the right hand side, this is the PBSSD. We are co design with the Samsung technology teams and then make sure we have the balance. This is a 32 by 2 SSD. So we have the 64 PCIe LAN to the SSD and we have the 64 PCIe LAN to the networking. In this design, we want to ensure that we have a, a take care of the performance, also the capacity and the densities. Here is uh, the look and the feel uh, for the, um, uh, our uh, system. This is an uh, Intel uh, base. Uh, you all have a two, uh, dual socket, and uh, this is the, uh, the, the real side. You have uh, the two OCP and the networking. And uh, this is uh, the, our AMD 2U systems. And the 2, uh, 2U system, we have the single uh, um, e-fake to cool down the systems. And in the real side, due to you have uh, more space, uh, you can put a 2 by 16 or or even four by eight PCI slot for any extensions. So overall, this uh, next generation uh, petascale or flash array, we can help the end user consolidate the performance. In our lab, we're testing in the one year system, we can achieve more than 230 gigabyte uh, the bandwidth and the more, th more than 30 million the IOPS. This can help with the data center and the software, uh, so software uh, defined storage to consolidate your uh, performance. And also you can consolidate your capacity with the uh, 30 terabyte drive uh, coming end of uh, later this year. 30 terabyte in the 2U space, uh, you can have the one petabyte storage in, inside the one box. And also I just mentioned the, high, uh, the thermal efficiency on the system level design. So overall, this is the design for the all kind of uh, applications. Uh, you can support the TLC, QLC, or CXL. And the design for the high performance uh, database, uh, hybrid converge, and the popular AI ML workloads or any virtualizations. And the overall, this goal, we are not just trying to build a um, high performance system, but we want to lower the data center's uh, TCO and uh, helping the, uh, the increase the rack densities. Okay, so the next, uh, I will invite my colleague to talk about the, how to support the CXL um, as it, uh, in the, uh, our systems. Uh, thank you, Patrick. So um, at OCB, OCB is all about openness and collaboration. So one thing that uh, at Submicro, innovation is the core of, um, at the heart of Submicro. So at OCB, we want to uh, share some of the struggles that we have been dealing with when we're trying to integrate the 6L uh, um, uh, device into our system. As you're aware, the uh, NVMe, um, I think we pretty much uh, familiar with the uh, NVMe um, structure in terms of sideband support. We have the uh, management applications, the uh, BMC controller that serves as the management controller and NVMe uh, interface. Using the protocol of MCTP and MCTP over SMBus or PCIe. So, but in terms of in terms of the uh, 6L, well, the application layer and uh, hardware controller is pretty much the same. But in terms of the uh, um, supporting a sideband protocol, that's something that actually quite different compared to existing 6L devices, uh, compared to existing NVMe devices. So on the um, 6L devices, right now the industry is trying to uh, work on something similar to uh, NVMe MI. Um, I would say more similar to um, the upcoming uh, 6L MI like device to mention the uh, to manage the uh, six L devices, in terms of the uh, uh, protocol, um, MCTP is still being used, but seeing on top of the uh, MCTP, there will be a CCI layer that um, running over the uh, MCTP. The biggest changes between the uh, um, from the electrical point of view is um, so compared to a previous uh, generation NVMe, the six L device now not only utilizing the uh, SM bus and I3C, but also heavily utilize I3C as well. That's actually create quite a lot of trouble for Zoom Micro when we're trying to integrate and um, incorporate 6L into our system. So uh, in terms of uh, sideband management solutions, well, NVMe, uh, SSC, they're using quite a lot of common addresses, like common address on VPD, common address on SMBus, common address on NVMe, MI, and even temperature polling. But if you look at the uh, current spec, 
of the uh, uh, six cell devices, right now there's no unified VPD or SVD, you have looked from the uh, memory perspective. There's no unified addresses. There's no unified addresses on uh, uh, SM bus. There's no unified address on the upcoming uh, six cell MI like devices. And also there's no unified temperature reporting feature as well. So as you're aware of the, um, if you're familiar with the uh, six cell protocol, six cell uh, basically support three type of devices. Six cell type one, which is networking, uh, caching, and accelerated devices. Um, type two will be accelerator with memory, which is GPU, DPU, and things like that. The type three is what we are uh, pushing and going and moving forward and integrate right at this point as Sumo Micro. So type three, memory, memory capacity expansion, memory bandwidth, uh, um, uh, bandwidth expansion, those are the uh, devices that we are trying to integrate into our system at this point. In terms of protocol, in-band protocol is fairly solid. Right now, there's a 6L driver that allows you to uh, operate in 6L.io, .cache, and .memory um, protocol. But in terms of the um, uh, sideband management, well, if you look at the existing device, existing device supporting, um, if you look at from networking perspective, supporting NCSI uh, plus the PLDM over MCTP. But if you look at from the GPU and XPU point of view, they're still using SMBus and SMB plus uh, PBI. So if you take a look at the memory, memory is actually leveraging the uh, CCI type three and NVMe, uh, the future NVMe like um, command set as well. So from our perspective, one biggest challenge that we have is we have a uh, coherence uh, interface, which is PCIe, a centralized in-band protocol, which is CXL, but unfortunately, at this point, um, there's no unified uh, attributes. Um, the sideband attributes that we can allow us to pull the, um, the information from all these type of devices. That's why we are here at OCP. We're trying to collaborate with you guys, and hopefully we, hear, um, we can work with you guys on, on this uh, next generation product. So uh, in closing, call to actions. So uh, obviously, we love to collaborate with you guys you guys have tons of good products that we want to uh, collaborate with you guys with. We have uh, U1S.S and U3.S uh, SSE support right at this point, and including the uh, 6L uh, 2T and even 1T uh, devices too. So let's work together. Uh, collaboration is one key thing as, uh, as Sumo Ico and with OCB. Let's promote EDSFF solutions Let's um, have the uh, EDSFF solution throughout the entire uh, enterprise and data center solution um, uh, at the data center uh, things. Yep, right? F uh, thank you. That's all the presentations, right? Mm -hmm.